What is up, everyone? We're back here with another episode of The Fantasy Football Addicts. I'm your host, Dawson, joined by Nick and Wyatt. And today, we got a great episode planned for you. We are starting a brand new series called Smash or Pass. So how this is going to work, we're going to bring 8 to 10 players, tell you their ADP, where they're going, and their positional ADP and overall ADP. And we're going to tell you if we're going to smash the draft button on them or pass. We're going to each tell you why we would do it or why we would not. So with that being said, before we get into the video, if you like the video, give it a like, go subscribe to the channel, go follow us on Twitter at the FF Addicts. Uh, you guys ready to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. So before we tell you the, who the first player is, uh, this is going to be all based off of redraft ADPs, and we're using uh, the Fantasy Pros ADPs because they do a combination of many different ADP. And uh, a PPR websites. format. Yeah, PPR. So with that being said, the first smash or pass player that we're going to talk about Devontae Adams, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. He is currently going uh, ADP 8th overall and wide receiver 2 in PPR leagues. And so I'm going to start so what I would do here. I would, I'm going to pass on uh, Devontae Adams here. And this has nothing to do with him as a player. Uh, he's a great player. Fantastic. He's a good fantasy player too. I just think first round, uh, I'm, this is also going to all differ based off what your team, what, what pick you're at and stuff like that, what your team that you're trying to build. I typically go running back heavy in the early rounds, and I think I can get wide receiver value later. Much good receivers are going to put up a similar value uh, later in the later rounds. So I'm uh, off Devontae Adams in the first round. I think Michael Thomas is the only wide receiver I would touch in the first round. Uh, yeah, for De De Devontae Adams, I have no issue with him being wide receiver too. Um, the only problem is, do you really want to take a receiver in the first or second – or first round or the beginning of the second round? I don't think so. I'm going to have to go with pass, and it breaks my heart because go, pack go, but – uh, he definitely will finish wide receiver too. Yeah, no, I'm going to go with smash on this one. I actually don't mind taking a wide receiver if you're in the back end. I think like your total value, we did that mock draft the other day and that ended up really well. Uh, I think you're looking for best value when you're looking for this this pick in the first round. I think Devontae Adams is that guy that's going to get you 20, 25 a game. Um, I have no problem taking him there. I'm just uh, worried. I mean, I think he will finish as a top five receiver once again. I mean, he has been producing about being double covered, but I, I'm just worried about the double cover uh, constantly. And I mean, I, he'll probably he'll probably be a top top five receiver. I mean, that's pretty much a given if he stays healthy. So it's not that he'll be a bad option. Once again, I just go running backs early. Yeah, he has no problem getting the ball. And what I like about Adams the most is he finds the end zone. He doesn't have Julio he problems a lot of where he can't. He scores a lot of touchdowns, and I I think that's great. Right. So it's going to take us to our number two smasher pass, and it's going to be the newly paid man, Derek Henry, running back for the Tennessee Titans, currently going seven overall and RB6. I'm going to smash the draft button for Derek Henry. I love Derek Henry. Uh, I was only on Derek Henry for redraft with the whole contract thing going on, but since he just signed his four-year extension, I'm in on Derek Henry everywhere, redraft or keeper. Love Derek Henry. He's, I mean, if, Without passing work at all, he's still a top five running back. He gets a ton of volume on the ground. They're run heavy offense. Uh, he gets all the goal line touches. There's pretty much no one there to compete with for touches. Uh, I think he's going to have another 300 touch season and probably be the rushing champ again. So I'll take Derrick Henry in the middle of the first round. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pass on Derrick Henry because of the passing issue. Um, the biggest re reason why is because if the Titans go down and they have to throw, that that game turns into a shootout, Derrick Henry's getting next to no work. Like, that scares me too much. I don't think Tennessee is a team that's going to win 10, 12 games this season. So I imagine there's going to be a lot of games where they're going to have to pass the ball a lot and Derrick Henry will not be involved. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pass on Derrick Henry as well. And I think this is just because he doesn't get any pass work. And I think the recency bias is just way too much. Like, I think he deserved to get paid. But as far as being, like, a top-level running back, uh, I think that's really hard to do. I think he's not well-rounded because he can't catch the ball. And he's getting so many touches in that offense. He can fall off a cliff so fast. Uh, I don't know. I, I just don't love it. Are, are you worried about him falling off the cliff this season for redraft? Are you saying like if he gets hurt or if he just because of the sheer volume touches or is he just going to get have too many touches on the body? Just whatever. Yeah, I mean, too many touches. He could get worn down, just start producing less. He could get hurt. I don't think he will. The man's just built different. Uh, I just I just don't love it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he had an, an amazing pace, but I, I don't think – I think he was only the guy his last year at Alabama, and then they forced a whole bunch of touches on him. He's getting forced touches in that offense now, and he just became a star, you know, 
at there in uh, Tennessee. Uh, so I don't know. I I don't love it. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a solid running back in the middle of first. So I'll probably always hit. I'll probably always hit a the smash button on a running back in the first round. I would much rather I think have Devontae Adams than Derrick Henry. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's I don't interesting. think I don't think I would, but that's I mean it's a definitely an argument. So the number three person we're gonna talk about today is Mike Evans, wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with his newfound quarterback. Uh he's going as wide receiver eight and twenty-fourth overall. And let me be clear, I am one hundred percent a pass on Mike Evans in all formats, in all aspects of fantasy football this season. Uh I just one, he's going in the third round, uh early third round or back of the second round if you're in a 12-team league. And there's so many receivers going after him that I would much rather have over him. For example, DJ Moore is going after him, and I, you know I love DJ Moore. Tom Brady is not a super deep ball passing threat. Uh, and I think – and Chris Godwin, like Wyatt has said, I think is going to be Tom Brady's Julian Edelman 9.0. I think he's going to be the number one in that offense for sure. Uh, Mike Evans not is not only a deep ball guy, but he's primarily scores his points on deep balls. He was boomer bust last season with Jameis, and Jameis, uh, I think, was a better deep ball passer than Brady. Maybe not better, but he threw it deep way more often than Brady will has done in the past. So I think Mike Evans is a clear fade for me, especially this high. If he falls to be the fourth or fifth, maybe, but I'm just not comfortable with someone who's probably going to be uh, kind of overshadowed this year even more than he was last year. Um, I'm actually going to smash, and I think I just changed my mind in the last five minutes thinking about it. Um, okay. Mike Evans has never had a season less than 1,000 yards in the season, and he played with some scrubs before Jameis was there, and Jameis was a scrub for a long time. So it's not like he needs a great quarterback for him to get his. Um, I know Godwin has broken out last year, and Godwin will get a lot of work from Tom Brady, but uh, even if t- Godwin gets 1,500 yards, Tom Brady's going to throw a lot more than 1,500 yards this year. Tom Brady's going to be itching towards that 5,000 mark, and I, it can't all go to Godwin. And if he's going in the end of the second, beginning of the third, and you're getting another 1,000-yard receiver with a bunch of touchdowns too. Yeah, I thought for sure I'd be the only one smashing Mike Evans right here, but I'm glad Nick hopped on. Here's the thing. Tom Brady's throwing for roughly 4,500 yards this year. I think he's going to be north of that, but let's just be realistic. I think 4,500 is a good number with all those weapons. Yes, I can't all go to Godwin, but I don't think Evans is going to be a yardage animal. I think he's going to be a touchdown animal. I think this offense is going to move, and like he may not get the ball until they're inside the 15, but after that, Tom Brady might throw it to this man three times in a row in the back corner just to see, you know, like I really think he's going to be letting it fly. And I think Evans might catch 15 touchdown passes this year, which I, I mean, if you I think um, touchdowns is probably one of the most touchdowns, one of the most fluky stats to predict. And Oh, but see, I don't think it's going to be fluky. I think you, yes, it can go more one way than the other way, but I think, Mike Evans is a touchdown magnet in the red zone, and I think they're going to be in the red zone a lot. I, I don't see how it doesn't add up to touchdowns. I disagree. I, I just don't like Mike Evans as a deep ball guy with Tom Brady uh, as quarterback. Just not that he can't throw the deep ball, which I'm sure he can. No, I'm not saying to he's going to be running running deep like routes. You just think I, he's I don't just going to be solely a red zone guy, so like three catches for three touchdowns? Pretty much. Like, he had, like, a game like that last year, and I think – I don't think it's going to be three catches, three touchdowns. He's going to have catches. He'll have, like, ten receptions a game or something like that. And, the uh, you know, they're going to be – 160 catches. What? Yeah. Th- this offense is going to be flowing, guys. Come on now. Dude, he's going to – And there's not going to be a ton of yardage. It's going to be those ones where he needs a third and six and a little out route. He's going to throw a high ball that Evans can just go get on the outside that he can win. I, I don't think that – he's going to be an absolute yardage animal like he was with Winston who would just bomb it down the field and Mike Evans would just catch it. I don't think it's going to be it. He's going to have, you know, some short little routes run up. It's going to be timing stuff with Brady. Once they get in the red zone though, which I think they're going to do a lot, it's going to be a lot of Mike Evans. And I want that. Moving to number four for the night on Smasher pass is going to be David Montgomery running back for the Chicago bears going as 49 overall RB 24. And he is a definite. (laughs) He's a smash for me, guys, because just solely for the ADP, I don't think he's going to be a top 10 running back by any means, but you're getting him in the fifth round. He's the 24th running back off the board, and he's guaranteed 270 touches this year. I think he's going to see a step forward in the passing game. We talked about how bad Tariq Cohen has been lately, 
And I also think either Mitch Trubisky improving and winning the job or Nick Foles coming in, taking the job and being better than Mitch Trubisky is going to improve that offense. He, his last year had to have been his floor. And assuming there's no injuries, he's going to outperform last year. So I think where you're, you're getting him on the value from last year where we saw him not perform very well. So I think he's due to outperform his ADP easily. Yeah, I think he's easily a smash for me. He, there's no way he doesn't finish a top 20 running back and to be taken 24th. Uh, right. that, that, that's just a joke, man. Like easily top 20 could be itching towards top 15. That's, eh, that's might yeah. be a little bit of a stretch, but he's I mean, a talented that's running out of back. his range, especially when you're getting like 250 touches a game. Yeah, he's, guaranteed season, 250 he? touches. All he has to do is average four yards of carry and he's a thousand yard rusher. Mm-hmm. So Plus the touchdowns. Right. Yeah, you said all he has to do is average four yards a carry. Le'Veon Bell averaged three point three last year or whatever. And he was like one of the worst running backs in the league. Yeah, that's averages. what I'm saying. So I think that I want to see him do it. I'm gonna go ahead and pass on him. I think that Foles is gonna take over the job pretty quickly. And I think when he does, Cohen's gonna become a more of a factor in that offense, even though I don't want it. I do think he's a pass catching back, and Trubisky couldn't hit the ocean from the beach. So that's <laughs> gonna go Foles is going to, you know, I think they're gonna use him more. He's gonna be James White esque. Um in that offense. And I, I don't love that for Montgomery's value. And I haven't seen him do it. I'm not confident that he can do it. I think that defense was elite and then they had no support. So they're just like, why are we playing very similar to what happened with the Jaguars? And the fact that, you know, they had that elite defense and then it fell apart because you're not getting any help from your offense. And that's hard to play like that. So I think they're really going to start falling apart this year um, unless Foles can just absolutely save it. And I don't think he can. Uh, I don't love it for Montgomery. I think they're going to be airing the ball out a lot, and Cohen's going to be on the field when they do. I mean, I'll just, I mean, I, I think my sole ar- best argument is just I'll take the guy getting upwards of 275 touches and has RB24 any day of the week. Uh, but I, you do make a good point that, that if that offense is what you're doing, we're going to do what you think it is, he's not going to do very well. But I think I do, I do see an improvement. I'm, I'm hoping Nick Foles can get the job done. So I, it, there's an argument either side, but I do think where he's going is a very good value. That's going to take us to number five for the night, Darren Waller, tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. And he, he's going as 55 overall, tight end five. That's a pass for me. Big time pass and the Darren Waller. Uh, that offense literally had no one to throw the ball to. Tyrell Williams was their number one receiver outside of Darren Waller. Uh, they, that's not happening anymore. They, they drafted Ruggs. They got Nelson Aguilar, who's bad, but he's still going to be another target. They have Brian Edwards, Lynn, Bow- Lynn Bowden. Hunter were- Henry – or Hunter uh, Renfro still there. Hunter, Hunter Renfro stepped forward at the end of the year. He kind of broke out at the end of the year. They have so many weapons in that offense. Darren Waller is not going to see near the t- the target numbers he had last year. Uh, he is, he's still a very good tight end. He showed that he's, a, he's not inefficient. He's not a bad tight end. He just had such a huge volume of targets that – that's why he finished his tight end too. He's not going to have that, and that's going to uh, take a step back, in my opinion. So he's a pass for me as tight end five. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Tight end five is way too high for Darren Waller. Uh, I think he might finish top 10. That might be a stretch this year, I think, with all those weapons that have been added. Um, but tight end five, there's no way he finishes the top five tight end this year. I'm going to go ahead and smash Darren Waller right here. And uh, I. I don't love doing it, but I definitely can't pass him. I, I think that Carr is a comfort guy, and he found comfort in Waller last year. Yes, they added weapons, but I think he's just comfortable in Oakland, I think, or Las Vegas now. I think he's comfortable with his surroundings. I think people have always tried to talk pressure onto him, and I don't think there is any. I think they like him there. I think he does the job. He's a perfectly average quarterback. I have no problem with him. He, he can get the job done, and I, I think he established a connection with Waller, and I think that's going to continue – I think he's an absolute animal, Waller. Um, he's a just a freak in athleticism. When I saw him on Hard Knocks, I knew when they were talking about him, like he was going to be effective in the NFL. Um, if you haven't seen him, Google him and just look at him. The dude's an absolute animal. So I see him finding the end zone quite a few times this year. I think maybe the total receptions goes down, but I, five, right, right, me is right in the sweet spot. I think that's where he goes. I think it's where, where his actual value lies. Moving on to our sixth, smasher pass of the night and that's Odell Beckham Jr. wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns going 32 overall and as wide receiver 12. I'm on the fence on this one. I think it's very close. I'm going to go with pass for OBJ and this hurts me because I'm predicting a step forward for Baker Mayfield. I don't think OBJ is bad. Obviously he's a good talent. I just 
I just think there's a, a once again there's a lot of weapons in that offense. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of fading back on OBJ. I did acquire him in a league we have, but I got him for such a good value. I, I think I think you only take him if he falls to you. He's uh, wide receiver twelve is just a little bit too high for me. I don't. Jarvis Landry's still there, and he's quietly put together back to back to back to back top 15, 20 seasons, whatever. Uh, they added Austin Hooper, still have David Njoku as of right now. Uh, just cream hunts there for the whole season. I, I just think there's too many weapons, and I think wide receiver 12 just a little early. I think he finishes in the wide receiver 15 to 17 range on the season. So I'm a slight pass for me. Um, no, I disagree with you 100%. I think he's a complete smash. I think he's going to break out – or not break out, but bounce back this year. Last year he played with the hernia. Uh, that just does not sound fun at all. First year in a new offense. Freddie Kitchens is an idiot. Uh, with the hernia, I mean, no, there's no way he's going to succeed in that offense. Baker Mayfield, like you said, you're, he's probably going to take a good step forward this year. Uh, I think OBJ is going to be a big part of that. And I, I just think that – he. I think he's a bounce back player. I think he's going to be – probably finishing in probably the top seven range for receivers for me really? uh, yeah I, it's just it's just hard for me to count out a talent like that with Baker Mayfield Freddie Kitchens gone that dude was just straight yeah the Freddie Kitchens leaving is a good argument I think he was the reason that offense was so bad and the mm -hmm. offensive line and that improved as well so it's not a bad mm -hmm. argument Wyatt yeah I think I'm gonna follow mixed lead and super smash on this one and I really, I've, since the beginning, Kitchens is gone, all that stuff. I, I think this offense is going to emerge this year. I have them right on the edge of the playoff bubble. I think the like the offense is going to work itself out between the two running backs. Yes, there's a lot of weapons, but I also think it's going to be much more efficient. And Baker, not last year, but the year before, pretty solid. And I think we're going to get that Baker again. There was a ton of drama going on last year. OBJ got in trouble for wearing a watch during a game or something. Yeah. There was just a whole bunch of stupid stuff, stuff going on. Yeah, like it was just all drama and there's too much pressure on Baker. Colin Coward was in his ear for the whole year. I mean, <laughs> like, so yeah, like they couldn't play. It was, it was drama. It was stupid. So I think Miles Garrett just got a fat contract. That defense is low-key nasty. If you haven't paid attention, I think they're going to be solid. I the agree. offense breaks out. I think they could be absolutely lethal this year. I don't think they will be. I think they'll be right where they need to be and be on that playoff bubble and work themselves in. OBJ is going to be a stud. I think people are totally forgetting how good this guy is. He went just completely viral overnight because of his sheer athleticism and the ability to make one catch. And then people realize he does that every game in warmups, just like just working out, just, just you for know. fun. Yeah, just for fun. The dude's an absolute animal. So I think Baker is going, yes, Jarvis Landry is going to be consistent. Hooper's going to have a role. OBJ is going to be the guy this year. I 100% believe that. And I have him finishing probably right around the top five range. I like mix at seven. I, I like that number. Give me OBJ. Uh, th this is weird for me because I have never been high on Odell because I hope y'all are right. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I've never been high on him before because I always thought his where he was being drafted was too high. Uh, he was always like a second or third yeah, round guy. Was and I, just, really I was weird. never into this, but now I think he's his ADP is falling it's to where really I'm comfortable important. taking him. I think he's yeah. getting drafted as like a top five receiver next year. I don't, I don't completely disagree with that take. I do think there's, it is that is within his range of outcomes. Uh, I'm just a little worried. I think it's just a little early for me. Uh, moving on to Julian Edelman. Wide receiver for the New England Patriots, going as 71st overall, wide receiver 33. I I don't – I guess this isn't – I don't know if this is an option, but I'm not a smash or a pass here. I, I'm more of a press. I, I think I'm just going to – I think I'm just going to – I guess I'm going to pass on Julian Edelman, and the only reason being I just – I have no idea how Julian Edelman is going to be this year. I, I literally have no clue how they're going to use that offense with Cam. I don't know what Bill Belichick's planning. Uh, I – I don't know. I, I, I just, I'm not in on Julian Edelman this year just because I, it's just too many question marks with the new quarterback and stuff like that. So I don't think he's going super, too high. Obviously he can be very good. And for fantasy purposes, we've seen him do it year in and year out. So why he could easily outperform wide receiver 33. He probably will. Uh, just it's too many question marks for me. I'm out. No, thanks. Yeah, I think I'm a pass as well. Uh, yeah. Like you said, there's too many question marks. I don't know what's going on there. Like, I mean, I've seen some people say that they're only going to use Cam as like a Taysom Hill guy. I, I mean, I don't see that happening, but absolutely not. No I way. don't see I don't see it happening. But can you really like? I can uh, almost like, guarantee like, that doesn't happen. Yeah, I can too. But I mean, Bill Belichick got a lot of tricks up his sleeves. I, I mean, mean you never, cool. you really don't ever know. So yeah. I don't. I I have never uh, targeted a New England player before, other than Gronk and. 
I think I'm going to stick to that again, and I'm just going to pass on them. Edelman is a beast every single year. With Brady there, and Brady's not there, I'm definitely passing. Like We got one, can't... boys. We finally agreed. <laughs> Why didn't I agree on our first one? This is our first one? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you were on the fence. I'm totally passing. No deal, Howie. Like <laughs> Edelman led the league in drops last year. He's a guy who needs pinpoint perfect passes, and Brady was able to do that for a long time, and it wasn't that great last year because he was getting double teamed, and it was hard to make it work, and he was the only option in that offense. Now you have Cam, who's a deep ball guy and not the most accurate guy. Do I think he's incre- incredibly talented? Yes. Do I think he's an absolute animal? Yes. Do I think he's going to take off and run a lot, taking away those short receptions from Edelman? Yes. Do I think Edelman's there for a couple years? Yes. But he is not going to be the guy he was before. He's going to be – I think Nikhil Harry is going to be more productive in this offense than Edelman. Edelman will have, like, awesome. maybe five touchdowns, not – nearly the receptions he had he'll be an okay guy but he's not going to be the julian edelman of old and i pretty much think he's becoming fantasy irrelevant now and i hate to say it because i love the guy but i don't like what they did it's just too iffy for me if they had stidham there i would have loved it because i think they're going to force feed edelman um similar to last year and i think they would have figured out ways to get him involved in that offense and they would have been more more like the previous offense that we've seen from new england but cam's there not good for edelman i'm passing Yep, that's going to take us to our last one of the night, and that's going to be Kareem Hunt, running back slash slot receiver for the Cleveland Browns, uh, going 62 overall and running back 28. Smash. Everyone just smash that. Running back 28. I think even if Nick Chubb doesn't get hurt, he finishes higher than running back 28. Uh, He's going to catch a lot of passes. I think it's possible that Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt both are very fantasy viable each week uh, with our projection of that offense being better. And I just think Kareem Hunt's going to catch a lot of passes. And he's if Nick Chubb goes down, you win the league. Congrats. So I think he's a, a smash as running back uh, 28 this year. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. I think that uh, – I don't think it's likely, but I think there's a pretty good chance that uh, Kareem Hunt can outscore Nick Chubb this year easily in PPR formats. Possible. Um, it's possible. Probably not likely, but I mean, it's possible. He actually I, outscored him six out of the last eight, six out of the eight weeks at the end of the season in full PPR. So. Yeah. So like, it doesn't surprise me at all. If you had to, if I had to pick between two people and it's Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, I'm taking Kareem Hunt because I can take him later. Yeah. And I think, they're gonna, I, I think they're going to finish fairly similar. So okay. I, I think Nick Chubb could be a bust this year. And I think Kareem Hunt could be an absolute boomer yeah. this year. Yeah, this is interesting for me because every draft we've done so far, I've ended up drafting Kareem Hunt right where he's at, right right around his ADP, and I don't know how. Like, I thought for sure someone would have reached for him, and his value was insane, and I've turned around and traded him both leagues because he's got great value. Like, I don't understand how he's going this low. In the role that he has alone, I think he's, yeah, he's uh, arguably an, an elite guy. So. The fact that, like, if Chubb goes down, sure. And I, I don't know, dude. I think it's absolutely crazy. This man said he won the rushing title as a rookie, bro. Like, yeah. what are people doing? So it's a, so I don't it's a understand. smash from you? It's a smash it's from It's an you. absolute smash. Like, whip out your backup button because you're smashing the first one so hard. You're going to need a new keyboard. You, yeah, you're going to need a new keyboard. Like, if you're playing sure. deal or no deal, you're breaking the thing. Like, yeah. I don't know, dude. Like. <laughs> People are crazy. This is a huge miss by the fantasy community in general. I think he should be going a lot higher. I think he's going to start creeping up uh, the more. I think people are starting to talk about it. The closer and closer to the season. I I will say for Dynasty purpose, I know this is redraft, but the fact that he does say he wants to stay there kind of makes me cautious. We'll see how that goes. It affects his value. Yeah, who knows what's going to happen. So we ended out with two Dawson and Wyatt agreements at the end of the night. So that's that's a little bonus for y'all. So that's going to do it for our Smash Our Pass episode one. Uh, we hope you guys like the style of video. I think this is a great video, kind of figuring out. I, I, I kind of really I, liked it a lot. Yeah, I Nick, this. this was Nick's idea for an idea or for a video, and I, I love it so far. So uh, if you liked it, like we think you will, go drop a like. Give us a subscribe. We just hit 40 subscribers, so we're inching our way up there, guys. Congrats Woo! to us. So uh, once again, go comment which guy uh, you like as a smash most or as a pass most. And – Go follow us on Twitter at the FF Addicts. And thank you guys so much for watching another episode of The Fantasy Football Addicts. Peace. Draft Glide.